Hi, I'm Kevin Hill, and today we're gonna do another fun painting. So let's get started. We'll start off today with our two inch brush and a nice little bit of blue and white. And maybe we'll come right up here and drop in a simple little sky. Today in our painting, the sky is not gonna be the feature of the painting, so we're not gonna spend too much time on it. Maybe just a, a simple soft sky here with oh, a few clouds. There, a little red in it. And the red just changes the color a little. See, it kind of changes it to a purple color, but it's very subtle. <laughs> Almost can't see it. I just wanna do that just, just for the sake of making it a little more interesting. Let's go ahead and shape some beautiful clouds up here. So I just have a bit of white and I'm alternating between white and purple just to create quick cloud shapes. Normally I put in the white first or the purple first and paint over it, and, you know, the normal cloud technique there. But today I'm using the light and the dark pretty much at the same time. And I'm not really wiping out my brush much. I'm just letting it run out on the canvas and then going into my light or dark so that I'm getting very, very soft colors. See how it's almost, it's almost all mixed together. It's a very blended and soft look and I like it. It's just different. I'm trying out a, a different way to, to get a nice effect. And I think it's working pretty well. Use very little paint, that way you don't get too muddy in here. There, see I just picked up some white without wiping the brush off. And your clouds kind of tie together better that way. Pretty fun. The light's coming across like this today, so keep that in mind. And you can kind of hit a couple of these areas right out on the edge a little brighter. Now let's go ahead and work on some of this background area. And as you can see, I did a quick basic sketch. Maybe we have a little farm here today. This is gonna be a small little path, not a road, but like a little path. It's too small for a road. And maybe this is a bit of a pond over here, lake, river, or something. There. I think this is gonna be a very nice scene. And we do have a little windmill over here. Just quickly sketched it in with some brown, kind of gave myself some ideas as to where the little angles would go. And as you can see here, I did, I changed my mind a couple times. But that's why I sketch, so that I can kind of figure out where I wanna go, put it on the canvas, and you really never know if it's gonna be just right until you get it on the canvas. So sketch, and if you don't like it, just sort of change it. I just gently rubbed it into the background and, and painted it again. And it's, it's really a great way to map everything out. We'll kind of cut up right along the barn here. Cover up the old sketch and, and make everything nice and neat now. Next, I'll load up the filbert brush with some brown, green, a little bit of yellow and white here. And with this nice soft green color, just want to block in some of these distant trees back here. Now, some of them are going to be over the mountains and some are going to stop below them, but none of them are going to stop right on it because that would seem kind of weird. So be careful about that. You can paint around your windmill, that's fine. We can always clean it up. It's just kind of a reference sketch anyway, so we're gonna paint a little more on top of this. There. And you can darken the color slightly, a little black into it, and start working on some of these deeper trees over here. And these are gonna go way above like that. Now while we're blocking everything in, let's just drop in some beautiful water to this lake or, or slow moving river back here. And most of this water is going to be reflection. Only a little bit's gonna be blue sky showing in the water. Well, I guess that really is a reflection too because water's clear, it just reflects what's above it. But only a small amount is gonna reflect the sky. and brush across and, and fill the rest in. Maybe we wanna go with a little more brown and yellow in the foreground. Make it look like some sand through the water. We can see the sand. There. And give everything a nice blend. Now we'll load up a three quarter inch brush here with some yellow. Let's see, let's throw some red in there, maybe some brown. And I don't want it that dark, so we'll lighten it up a little with some white. And I'm just gonna start by blocking in 
the face of this little barn. There, vary your colors, put some black in it or, or maybe a touch of blue. Watch this, we're gonna throw some blue in it. Just a bit, not a lot. See that? It just changes it and makes it more interesting. Scrub this paint in as well as you can. What I mean is really work it into the canvas. It's applied very sparingly so that you can paint, oh, you can paint over it again and again and again with highlights and details and textures because you're gonna want a door and window and, and tons of highlight and detail and shadows all in this barn. So in order for you to be able to paint all of that over this wet background, this background has gotta be just enough to cover the canvas and no extra, very little paint on here. In fact, it's okay if some of the canvas shows through because it'll most likely get covered by the next several layers of paint that we're gonna put on. There. And then of course, this is gonna be the same color, but then back here, you've gotta darken it up. There. Now with our three quarter inch brush and some white, and a little bit of this muddy brown. Let's, let's begin adding the first highlight to this barn. I quickly indicated where the shadows were gonna be, but I'm gonna go ahead and ignore them now and paint right over them as if they weren't there. They just help to remind me what I'm doing. There we go. These are the little vertical boards that the barn is made up of. And I've decided today that we're doing a, a brown barn. You can do, we have done in the past, brown barns that are not really brown. They're more gray or red. So this is completely up to you. There. And the more you brush it, the softer it'll get. So you have to decide how, how much detail you want in here. And I'm gonna add quite a bit of detail, just working with the barn over and over adding little colors, watch this, you can add some blue, white, just change it. And I even am going to probably, probably wanna put in some yellow, just depends, we'll see. I'm gonna, yeah, I think we're gonna have some sunlight. This is gonna be a very sunlit painting. Right now it looks pretty, pretty flat, but we're gonna brighten it up. And the barn's gonna, the barn's gonna fit in with that. This is a metal roof, so we'll put some rust on it, but for now get some some nice little highlights out on the top. Some blue to reflect the sky. Next, with our filbert brush, we'll tap right through some yellow, some white. It looks like there's a little blue in there too, which is fine. And I'm gonna go ahead and work on these trees. Now you may be looking over at that barn and wondering what's going on. Well, I've got it as bright as I can get it at this point until I decide how bright this foreground's gonna be because it wouldn't make any sense for the barn to be very bright where everything else is not. So I wanna at least get some highlight on these trees. And then while I'm highlighting, I'm, I'll decide how bright we wanna make this, but I'm, I'm looking at this meadow area right here. And I think we're gonna go really bright. But I just, I don't wanna do it yet. I wanna build up the rest of the painting first. But that's really just a personal choice. If you'd rather finish out the barn and then complete the rest of the painting, that's completely fine with me. Whatever, whatever makes it easy. That's the way to do it. Now with the filbert brush, I'm just working on some beautiful little highlight leaves out here. Just some extra highlight to really brighten this area up. So this tree's going to get a little extra. Be very careful. You need to wipe off your brush each time you reload before you stick it in the fresh paint because otherwise your bright color won't stay bright for very long. There. We can add a little brightness to those trees back there, but not much. Maybe we'll just sort of drag the brush because that softens the stroke. Very gentle, not too much. <laughs> or it'll all kind of mix together. Very, very faint. And we can also tap some grass down here, some more highlights and things. You can use the filbert or the fan, whatever works for you. Next, we'll tap on a bit of grass here to this beautiful meadow. Maybe some of it's in shadow, so we don't wanna to go totally bright with everything. 
instead leave a lot of beautiful areas that are dark. And that makes it so interesting. So you kind of just decide maybe you can take you can take highlights out. So you you know if you go a little overboard, and I may end up tapping those down. We'll see. We'll just see. But it's pretty fun. Just quickly and loosely block this in, and then make adjustments later. and you may want to soften it. So you can actually just take your brush with very little paint on it, wipe it on a paper towel, and brush it carefully. There's very little paint under here, so it should be okay. Shouldn't mix together too much. Mm, I like it. With the three quarter inch brush, let's work on this beautiful little road or path. It's not really a road, it's a, it's a small path. There. I don't want to go too crazy with the with the highlights today because I want the, the center of interest to be kind of up there, not so much on the path. However, the path is nice and it kind of supports the subject. There. Maybe a, a bit darker over here. You can do that. And then of course the light's coming across like this, so this area here is shaded because this big old grassy mound here casts a small shadow. There. With our liner brush, I'm gonna just drop in a beautiful little fence. I've not thinned down this paint at all, so it kind of leaves some rough and broken textures in it. I have light color loaded on one side and a dark color loaded on the other side. That gives me a a highlight and a shadow all at once. It'd be kind of tough to go back in there and try to add the highlights. All right, well, I think we're done. I had a lot of fun, I hope you did too. Don't forget to check out my website, my DVDs, and also my brush line. And thanks for watching.